Hi everyone, I'm John Lin, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another part of our EHR telehealth series where we sit down with EHR vendors to hear about how they're approaching telehealth. And today we're sitting down with Greenway Health and we have David Cohen, he's chief product and technology officer at Greenway Health. Welcome, David. Hi, John. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so excited to learn more about it. But uh, you know, before we begin that, tell us a little bit about yourself and Greenway Health. Sure. So I've been with Greenway Health now for about a year. Uh, Greenway, as you know, is one of the leaders in ambulatory healthcare IT solutions. Um, my background: I've been in the healthcare IT industry for about fifteen, uh, the last fifteen years. I spent most of that time on EHR workflows, and the past couple of years on looking at AI and machine learning opportunities. So I'm, I'm excited about being here to talk about the things that we're doing at Greenway with telehealth. Nice, well, we may have to talk about AI when we get to the physician documentation portion of this, but uh, let, let's, uh, let's dive in there. You know, we're talking telehealth. So what was Greenway's view on telehealth, say pre-COVID-19, January, et cetera, and how did you know, COVID-19 change that approach? Yeah, so you know, I would say pre-COVID, um, and Greenway has always been focused on um, working very closely with our customers, partnering with them to best understand what their business needs are and how we can best support them with the portfolio of solutions that we have within Greenway. Telehealth, as you know, for many of our customers and really for the industry was always this kind of emerging, budding thing, but we had never really seen it take off. Um, COVID changed all of that, right? And COVID, I think, was the catalyst that the industry really needed to see um, the telehealth explosion. And some of that was, was driven by, you know, the urgent need for our customers to um, figure out new ways to manage patient care when the patients aren't coming into the office. Um, but we also saw relaxation on, on billing rules, which was uh, really helpful and beneficial to um, that catalyst. So as telehealth became more of a strategic need for our customers, and what I would say is an overarching virtual care strategy, right? It's what are all the things that um, independent ambulatory practices need to be able to best support and manage their patients when their patients aren't physically coming into the practice. Um, so telehealth is one very important aspect of that. And as such, it became a more strategic focus for Greenway um, as it became more important for our customers. And, um, you know, the important thing, I think, in, in a post after COVID and also looking, you know, ahead, we believe that telehealth is here to stay. So, um, you know, the catalyst emerged. Um, but now I think a lot of our customers are looking at um, how they can integrate telehealth as a strategic part of their ongoing practice. And we're focused now on how we can best support our customers to uh, be able to do that. Yeah, I mean, telehealth really was that always emerging, never budding. It's, it's kind of like the kid in high school, right? That never grew. And then they finally did. You're like, wait, what happened here? Right, right. <laughs> I remember being at a conference and one of the questions at the conference was, um, how many of you believe that telehealth is the future of ambulatory care? And everyone raised their hands. The next question was, how many of you have participated in a telehealth visit? <laughs> and no one raised their hands. And it was, yes, that is the problem. But now I think, you know, COVID is really helping to change all of that. Yeah, I like to say the value equation didn't make sense from a provider perspective and COVID changed that value equation. So that's right. That Absolutely. Now, you guys recently announced that uh, you'll be rolling out your own telehealth platform. So why did you choose to start developing your own in-house telehealth solution? Yeah, there's a lot of options available, obviously, from a telehealth perspective. There's, there's you know, many established players. But as we talk, I would say there's two primary reasons. You know, one is when we talk to our customers about um, what their requirements are and what they really want to see from a telehealth product, um, they, you know, there, there isn't something off the shelf 
that we could offer them that really addresses all of those needs, right? So I think one of the most important things is they want something that's going to really be efficient and streamlined from a practice workflow perspective. So to do that, um, it obviously requires a deep level of integration with their existing products and services. So when we looked at you know, what the effort would be to integrate, um, we, we decided that the best path was to develop something new that we could bring to market that would be fully integrated with our customers' existing workflows. Um, number two is, you know, I've always been, uh, had more of a vision where we see the industry and where we see the technology going. And I, I feel that, um, you know, from a, from a telehealth perspective, the opportunity to really leverage um, new technologies, whether it's AI and machine learning, um, to do things like sentiment analysis, or you know, where we're seeing the industry going from an ambient clinical documentation perspective. Telehealth mm -hmm. really lends itself well to that type of technology. So I believe, you know, one, making sure that we're really focused on what our customers' needs are from a workflow perspective, and then two, where we see the future going from an opportunity perspective. That kind of lend itself to Greenway um, going down the path of developing something in-house. This is a really good point. And I mean, you went there, so let's talk ambient clinical voice a little. I, I, that was my first article, I think, once we saw telehealth exploding. I said, if I'm a telehealth vendor, I go knock down the door of those ambient clinical voice people and say, hey, let's make telehealth the auto documentation solution, right? Like if you could market it as that, that changes the equation for the providers. And, you know, before all these ambient clinical voice and even today are saying we need to put microphones in the room and it, you know, it's just such a heavy lift, whereas in telehealth, all of that's solved. So that's yeah. interesting that you see that vision as well. That's right. So, you know, microphone in the room, you know, technology has definitely advanced significantly and you know, players like Nuance are doing really great things, but the challenge has always been with um, advancement of um, of speech to text, with capabilities like speech or di speaker diarization clarity of your voice stream, um, to be able to do get really real high accuracy on your um, speech recognition capabilities, um, and that's something that you know, telehealth really lends itself to being a great proof point for those technologies, as well as things um, like sentiment analysis and, you know, sure. being able to pick up even things like, um, like uh, um, heart rate from a video feed. So I think right. where the industry and where the technology is going, telehealth's really going to be able to support that well in the future. Yeah, and I've seen a number of applications that way, and it makes sense, I, I don't even, it, if you use a third-party vendor, is that even possible unless they integrate it themselves? That, that's an interesting question to look at. Are you using something like a Twilio or something like that, or are you just, uh, you know, I, I think 99% yeah. of people are using WebRTC, that's, right? And that's, right. <laughs> that's yeah, standard. so we partnered, we partnered with Twilio to provide video services and video capabilities. And one of the nice things about, video, about Twilio is that you can get separate audio and video streams from that telehealth encounter. So it really opens the door then for you, you to be able to leverage those streams to go do second order things. Nice. All right, that's a really interesting and a great take. Uh, is this gonna be available on all your EHR platforms? Cause I know you have a couple. Yeah, so Greenway has two primary EHR products in the market, Energy and Prime Suite. And because we're a multi EHR company, um, pretty much every ancillary product that we develop, we think about how we can build that in an EHR agnostic way. So yes, this will be available for both um, Prime Suite and Energy customers. And you know, you talked a little bit about integration and how important that was. Can you talk a little bit? What are where are you looking at integrating it with both product lines? And maybe you know what's going to be first? Yeah, I imagine it's going to go through iterations. What do you look focus That's on right. first, and what's in the future? That's right. Yeah, we're taking a unique approach to how we um, think about developing um, telehealth and unique, I would say, for Greenway in that we're focused on building an MVP product that will get to market. That will be more or less a, a standalone product that will 
um, integrate with registration and scheduling within our core EHR products, but then taking a rapid cycle um, iterative approach to new, new product and new feature releases. So um, from an integration perspective, um, we're looking at how we can integrate that experience then directly into um, our EHR products so that our customers can then, you know, our providers can then um, review the patient chart, do their clinical documentation, their encounter documentation, um, right there alongside that telehealth encounter. So you just wanted an excuse to uh, to work at a startup at a big company, is that, you know, you got the MVP <laughs> going on. You... <laughs> that's right, that's, that's right. <laughs> yeah, we're really, you know, and this is, I would say, a recurring theme for, for Greenway, which is we're really focused on how we can now start to layer and leverage innovation back into and on top of our core products. So telehealth is just one of the new innovative products that we're building, um, but really trying to take a, a, you know, a more modern SaaS-based approach to new product development. Um, and doing things as you, as you as you mentioned, you know, like like building MVPs. But I think the important thing about MVPs that you have to remember is MVPs. You can only deliver an MVP if you're able to then iterate quickly on top of that, right? It doesn't work if you build if you deliver an MVP and then stop, because you'll never deliver all the things that the market needs. So we're really focused on deliver the MVP and then continue to iterate quickly with new features and new capabilities. Yeah, that's a good point. And it's more fun to deliver an MVP that thousands of people are going to use pretty quickly. So that, yeah, that, that's yeah, really exactly, good. exactly. <laughs> so our customers are really excited about our product launch and, and they're, they're ready for it. So we're excited to get that into the hands of our users. Cool. Well, let's give them a little preview of it. We call this our feature lightning round. Uh, so you're obviously going to be talking about your products that you're developing. And I think you're, you're planning to launch this fall. Is that what you've announced? That's right. Yeah. Okay, so let's go through each of the features and you know, we kind of go through them and say, do you have them, do you not, you're working on it, you're thinking about it, maybe through partners, et cetera. So first up is HIPAA compliant, I assume. Yep, absolutely, yeah. yes. I should probably get rid of that, but everyone's gonna ask, is it HIPAA compliant? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, of course, that's table stakes <laughs> for an EHR company is to, to yeah. build things that are HIPAA compliant. It seems like it, uh, it would be fun if I asked the question and they said no though, but <laughs> that's <laughs> Um, so how about a custom branding? How are you approaching like the, the branding of your telehealth products and possibly even your emails and things like that? Yeah, we'll, we'll support custom branding and we're still working on what that specifically is going to look like. But that is one of the requirements from our customers is that we're able to support customer branding, particularly from a uh, patient endpoint perspective. Yeah. They, they don't need to know who Greenway is, right? That's <laughs> they right. Need to, That's right. They need to know who Dr. Smith or whatever. All uh, right. How about a telehealth appointment scheduling? Is, I assume that's going to be integrated with your EHR PM products? That's right. That's right. That'll be integrated in the in the PM system. And our PM systems already support that today, the ability to create you know, appointment types of telehealth visits. Okay. Great. And how about patient self-scheduling? Um, that'll be available through uh, our marketplace partners. Okay, great. And um, asynchronous text messaging with patients? So text messaging, well, um, yes, but that occurs through a companion product that we have called Greenway Patient Messaging. Um, okay. Greenway Patient Messaging also leverages the uh, Twilio platform. So everything will be fairly seamless from that perspective. So you, they're already using that today to, to That's message right. patients? That's right. Yeah, our customers are already using Greenway Patient, patient Messaging today. Um, and, and actually, you know, um, when we talk about virtual care strategies, COVID was also a big catalyst for patient messaging because obviously as part of that holistic strategy, our customers were looking for um, new ways to connect with and communicate with their patients. Yeah, if we just shift to value-based care, that will explode even more. But, uh, That's you know, right. speak, speaking of always emerging and never, <laughs> never <laughs> growing, that's value-based care. Cool. How about real-time text chat during the visit? So that's, you know, kind of like yep. if we were on a Zoom call, you know, you have the text box, you can share links, et cetera. You yeah, we have, we have that built right into the interface of our telehealth product. Yeah, it's pretty awesome how, how valuable that is, uh, you know, and some products don't have it, so that's great. Yeah. Uh, 
how about web-based versus app-based? And there's kind of two perspectives. One is the clinician side, and the other is the patient side. How are you approaching it, web versus app? Yeah, we're so we're doing um, web-based URLs for both sides, and okay. uh, you know our perspective is that just makes it easier for everyone to access since everyone obviously has a browser. So that'll be our that'll be our lead-in is to go with a browser-based um, offering. And, and you know, just two clarifiers on this. Well, one is the uh, clinicians love that. Uh, they don't want to be on the app. They want to be have dual screens and <laughs> be able to multitask yeah. and, right. and do some stuff. I, I've seen that's table stakes for a lot of clinicians. From the patient side, is it a link to be able to join, or are you going to force them through the portal? How how yep. are you approaching? There will that be way? a there will be a link for them to be able to join. Okay. So and that I, link then would get communicated out right through whatever the um, messaging or scheduling platform is that our customers are using. Yep. All right. Makes sense. And uh, which could but, also be the portal, by the way. But <laughs> portal is not a requirement. Sure. I, I think it's uh, it's interesting. You know, in some discussions, they want to drive the portal interaction because of meaningful use, which is an interesting take yeah. as well. Yeah. But then you have the trouble of do they remember their password, et cetera. So I That's think right. becoming right. standard, send a link uh, and be able to. Yeah, in. of course. We'd love to drive portal adoption, but we don't want that to be a barrier to patients being able to access their telehealth visit. Sure. All right. How about audit logs? I assume it's similar to the rest of your EHR. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. We're logging all of the um, all the telehealth encounters. So you know everything you would expect from an auditing perspective, being able to track who's accessing um, the the telehealth visit room you know, IP addresses. So pretty much everything you would expect to audit will be audited. And let me throw a little curveball since it wasn't on our original list. Are, are you planning to record the videos or allow the option to record the videos? Yeah, we're not going to record the videos. Definitely not. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, even in the even in the future, I would not expect to record video. I think that is something that, you know, the consumers in particular are highly sensitive about. Um, so even if you think about in the future world where you may be leveraging um, AI capabilities, those video streams would go out to an AI service, they would be interpreted, and um, you would get the interpretation, but the video just gets thrown away. Yeah, it, it's a controversial discussion, right? Uh, I like to say it's the double-edged sword. It could condemn you, but it also could uh, validate you, it, you know, and there are privacy yeah. questions for sure. Yeah, it, exactly. And the privacy questions I think are more concerning to, you know, the most concerning thing to me where I don't feel that I've seen a lot of rep, rece, uh, receptivity in the industry to recording video um, and, yeah. and audio as well for that matter, right? I don't feel you'd want to rec record audio either. Yeah. It, anyway, it's a topic we could dive into a lot more. I know I worked even in a counseling center where we needed to record it for the practicum students to review later, uh, but then it becomes, it has its own challenges, right? So right. You know, there are certain situations that it makes sense, but uh, then if it gets compromised, it's, it's scary. So definitely an interesting discussion. How about automated patient reminders? Those will be coming soon. But certainly, you know, visit reminders um, could come through whatever, you know, schedule reminder system our, our customers may be using. And, and it sounds like most of those are marketplace partners for um, most of the reminders. Some of them are marketplace partners and some are, are Greenway, Greenway products. Okay. And uh, how about the patient intake paperwork done electronically? So we generally um, partner to offer pay, uh, patient intake, we uh, have several marketplace partners, including Freesia and Health Assist, that offer patient intake functionality. We do offer some lightweight intake forms through um, our Greenway patient portal, um, but they're you know they are fairly lightweight. Yeah, it's the, there's a lot of great partners in that space. Even a lot of forms one. Uh, Forum Fast, which became Interlace Health, et cetera. I mean, they've really created a, a robust solution that integrates with the EHR. So I think that's, that's an right. interesting approach. Cool. Uh, how about the virtual waiting room? And let me expand it a little bit, which is like 
the flow, right? What's the flow? Yeah. Did they go to a virtual waiting room? Can you facilitate the MA pulling them in versus the doctor and, you know, or maybe even the front desk? I think that's going to be interesting. This is a discussion a year from now. What, you know, mm. what's the optimal workflow <laughs> that I think we'll all be able to answer. But what, yeah. what's your approach for now and kind of this virtual waiting room workflow? Yeah, the flow is a, is, is a really good point, and it's actually another one of the reasons why we wanted to – you know, build our own to be able to control that flow experience, because that's something that I haven't seen the industry really get right yet. Um, but it's so it's a work in progress, right? So the, the flow right now from a patient perspective is they would, um, they would enter into the virtual waiting room, the provider, when they go into their portal, they would see um, all of the people that are in that provider's virtual waiting room and they would have the ability to um, start the visit whenever they're ready. And um, it could also be to your point an MA on the, on the uh, practice side that's accessing that waiting room as well and entering the, the patient into the actual visit. So there will be waiting rooms on both sides. Yeah, I think I mean, the it, other, you know, the other question, John, then is for the the patient experience, what um, what inf what type of information could we be offering the patient while they're in that virtual waiting room so that they can be productive in managing their health while they're in that room? And that's something that we'll also be uh, be looking at in the future. Yeah, I, I think that's a really great question. Are you going to offer virtual CNN or you know, like that's you know right. or, you know there's even products around that, so they, I'm sure they're going to be wanting people to integrate while they're waiting room, or is the waiting time just not long enough, so you don't need the TV to keep you distracted, uh, or because you're at <laughs> home, so you have yourself. I, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if it if that type of stuff really evolves. But I think to your point. Uh, I don't think we've solved it yet, and I think there's going to be a lot of questions asked. Uh, you know, why did the MA go in the room before the doctor anyways, and was that necessary? I think we're going to find out the answer to that question, right. and we'll probably find out in some situations, yeah, it was really necessary, and we hijacked it as part of our rush to telehealth, and, and we need to reinsert it or not, right? I mean, I think it'll be, you know, these are questions that I think are still open a little bit and seeing what's the optimal, right? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we survived. Now let's figure <laughs> out the optimal. So. Interesting. How about uh, multilingual and remote interpretation? And it's kind of two separate, but they are related, obviously. Uh, how are you? Yeah, approaching we're not that? we're not supporting those right now. Um, we will. Um, we are looking at um, how we might support group calls, which could allow for an interpreter to also join in the visit. Um, okay. But that's not something we'll be supporting out of the gate. So you won't have team-based <laughs> solutions uh, to begin, just one-to-one. -one? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah, and it, you know, another, another, again, another opportunity to look at leveraging um, AI capabilities and um, closed captioning, translation. I think those are all really exciting opportunities to look at. Yeah, it's come a long way. It is interesting though. Once you have the team base, you can invite a whole widespread group of people, whether it's a remote interpreter, whether it's another specialist, whether it's the MA, whether you know a chaperone or something like that, or whether it's a caregiver, the mom or the dad or the you know the daughter, or the son that might need to be there. It, it opens up lots of interesting opportunities. Right, so. right. Good. How, how about uh, integrated clinical documentation? We kind of talked about. Uh, eventually getting to ambient clinical voice, but uh, you know, what's your thoughts on integrating documentation? Yeah, so that is one of the reasons why we want to fully integrate the EHR experience into the provider's workflow so that all of the documentation can be done in context of that visit. Yeah. So ultimately it's integrating the, the telehealth experience into the place where they're already doing their clinical documentation rather than trying to create new documentation experiences somewhere else. Yeah, if we could solve that and automate some of the documentation, doctors would love telehealth. Right, right. <laughs> Which right, right now they don't, right? Like, but if, you, if right. we could solve that, they would. So that's <clears> awesome. <throat> Um, how about a screen image capture? So, you know, my favorite is like, I show you my wound or something. Can you capture the image and integrate the image that way? That'll be in future releases, but not our initial target. Yeah, of course they can always do screen capture, but 
you know, there's some yeah. issues there. Yeah, and it also, <laughs> you know, depend. Yeah, image capture would be better. Um, obviously, you have questions about the fidelity of the image in video. Yeah, and that's where we're seeing a lot of people with the asynchronous text is saying, send me your high quality phone images, which is shockingly <laughs> good quality. Yeah. Uh, and let me do that. And then we'll do the video, which isn't as good of quality. So we're seeing interesting mixes there. How about screen share? Are you able to share your screen? Let's say you want to show some patient education, maybe a, a graph of all your lab results or stuff like that? That'll be a future capability. Sounds good. We'll see if Twilio comes out with that. I, I think yeah. that, that should be on their list. Huh? Um, how about patient education? So patient education, obviously, because we're integrating um, telehealth in the in the provider's workflow, patient education would be enabled through their existing workflows. Sounds good. And how about a uh, post visit? And this is kind of multifaceted, but you know, patient ratings, reviews, surveys, and I, I think it could be some internal, right? Whether they're trying to get their, you know, sur internal survey results and feedback, or it could be some, you know, ratings or reviews to the health grade ZocDocs of the world. Yeah, that uh, might be a future thought, but that's not something that we're looking at doing today. I imagine you have some marketplace partners who do some of this already, or? Uh, you know, I'm not sure, John. Not yeah. sure about that. There's a lot of partners that would love to be marketplace partners, if not. Right, so. <laughs> right. There's a lot that are doing it, so cool. And how about uh, patient payment? And, you know, I guess we can roll it kind of into one. One is patient payment. The other is kind of the telehealth-specific billing and verification, so the insurance side of things. Yeah, so from a patient perspe uh, payment perspective, we support that through our patient portal, um, as well as through various marketplace partners. Um, to your other question, from a provider billing perspective, you know, that's one of the areas where I think Greenway really shined in terms of our COVID response was keeping current um, in terms of uh, visit documentation for our customers to be able to get reimbursed for the, the COVID and telehealth type visits and encounters. And we provided a number of webinars and um, available also on our Greenway Resource Center information for our customers about how to get a uh, bill and get reimbursed for um, those telehealth and COVID type encounters. Yeah, and I, I think that's going to just continue to change over the next year as, as we figure out what's the new <laughs> telehealth reimbursement model that makes sense. Yeah, it's certainly been very dynamic, but um, that's one of the value propositions, I think, of working with Greenway is that we have, you know, obviously a very strong revenue services offering. So we have a lot of industry expertise in terms of how to make sure that we are um, billing appropriately for those encounters. Yeah, I wonder how many billers retired because of all these changes. It's more <laughs> complex than... Then, then I think most people appreciate you. You're like, oh, it's just a visit. And you're like, no, it's not just a visit. That's right. That's it's right. Location. It's, it's all sorts of things that if you want to get paid for it. Then, you know, yeah. It yeah. And we, you know, when, when, when COVID hit, we launched some new revenue services offerings, one of them called GRS Express, to better help support our customers um, for managing their billing operations. And some of that is exactly for the reason that you mentioned. Billing obviously is changing very dynamically and getting a lot more complex. Um, and many practices are looking for Greenway to really assist them on that. Great. Well, thanks for the overview of your product. I'm going to shift gears a little now to talk about, you know, I think we have 150 different telehealth <laughs> vendor live video solutions on our list of, of live video telehealth options for people. So how will you approach it if, say, one of your customers already has a relationship with a telehealth solution or, or maybe just decides that, hey, you know, I really like this third-party product? Uh, you know, will you collaborate with them or how will you approach collaborating with third-party telehealth vendors? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, you know, many of our customers are already working with established telehealth partners and, and Greenway firmly believes in um, supporting uh, open and interoperable uh, ecosystems within the industry. So we all have to work together to provide capabilities that our customers need. And Greenway is very supportive uh, and embracing of maintaining um, an open an open platform ecosystem. So 
We'll, of, of course, continue to work with third-party partners in telehealth and in other areas and make sure that we're um, exposing to the industry various APIs that are necessary for those partners to integrate. However, we, we do believe, and in, in in, as we discussed, the reason that we went down you know, our own path is because we believe that there's opportunity for Greenway to create a differentiated product in this space. So um, you know, that's something that we're, we're actively pursuing, but of course, maintaining our commitment to openness um, in the industry. And as part of that openness, is it about open APIs that are you doing your own? Or are you following the FHIR standard? Of course, you do HL7 and all of that as well. Yep. Uh, export of CSVs. It's amazing what people yeah, do sometimes. Yeah. But so, is that your approach, API-wise? Yeah, so that's right. So Greenway is very actively now um, working on our FHIR fire positioning. So we're rapidly advancing um, the, the capabilities of our FHIR uh, FHIR services. However, we also offer a very robust API platform called Gappy, which is Greenway API. And um, that really goes way beyond the fire specification because obviously fire, as you know, is still, is still early. Um, it still leaves a lot of holes in terms of what partners are able to do with fire. And we support and supplement that with a much more robust API platform. Um, that is available to all of our marketplace partners. Nice. So are there specific areas where, you know, you can say, hey, you know, we're, Greenway is not going to go there. I mean, I think we already talked about ratings and reviews possibly, you know, uh, you know, you mentioned a few others. Are, are there some areas that you're like, this, we're just going to trust partners for this. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I ask because I think it's valuable to give that type of indication because then your partners can come in and support you. Are there areas that you're like, no, we, we don't really want to go there. You know, let's leave that to the partners. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, we talked about um, we talked about the patient intake space as being one example. You know, there's right. obviously really strongly established players in that space that we have in our marketplace. Um, and we, you know, that's an area that we, you know, we might kind of butt up against the fringes in terms of what we're doing with our patient portal, but we're not actively looking to um, really go out and create um, a, new, a new offering there. Um, there's lots of other areas, John. So, you know, one example, you know, we have, we have a lot of partnerships. We partner, um, we partner from a, uh, a care management and care coordination perspective. You know, that's a service offering that we're not necessarily looking to um, take on ourselves. So we have a partner offering in that space. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of areas where we're not going to um, do active development, where we'll continue to work with our partners. You're, you're not rolling out a full genomic uh, medicine. <laughs> for... <laughs> yeah, genomics, you know, content development is another interesting one. Right. So we're really you know, having a lot of conversations with industry partners around content development. We, you know, we're, we're quite frankly not, not looking to really um, develop, actively develop content. When I say content, I mean things like, you know, are you going to be developing um, care, care gap and care management um, um, libraries or, or libraries of content for our customers? We're going to enable that within our EHR and within our workflows, but we'll continue to partner from a content management perspective. Yeah, that makes sense. So, you know, as you look at the, you know, the future and, you know, obviously use your crystal ball and all that, but do you see telehealth as an important part of the business of Greenway Health? Uh, you know, you kind of said, yeah, you think it's here to stay, but, you know, a year from now, are we, are we still going to be talking about telehealth? Like, is it going to be an important part of your business or do you think it's just, you know, table stakes to the, being in EHR? Yeah, so, you know, our approach, as we talked about, is always to look at providing the best ecosystem of products to support our customers' business continuity needs. And I think what we've seen with, you know, the COVID catalyst is that telehealth now is going to be more prominent in our customers' businesses. You know, we're seeing a lot of customers that are going back now and evaluating what are all the different types of patient encounters they have and which, uh, which of those encounters would best lend themselves to be telehealth type encounters in the future. 
So they're really looking to how do they carve off telehealth and make that an established part of their business. So for that reason, we do believe that telehealth is here to stay. We believe it's going to be a prominent um, product in Greenway's portfolio. But you know, as, as I mentioned, we're also looking at what is the ecosystem of products that we're providing to our customers, and are we thinking about holistically about what our customers really need to be successful and, and to help them um, better engage with, manage the care of their patients. So yeah, I do believe that telehealth is, is here to stay. I believe it's gonna be an important part of our customer's business. And therefore, I believe it's an important part of the ecosystem of technology products that we're making available to our customers. Great. Well, thanks, David. Uh, this is a really enjoyable conversation, and it looks like we'll have to have you back to, to talk <laughs> ambient clinical voice, AI. Uh, you know, there, there's a number of topics I think we'd really enjoy, maybe even a year from now, what's the optimal telehealth workflow and, and some of those things. But uh, thanks so much, David, for sharing your insights and perspectives and how Greenway is approaching telehealth. And thanks, everyone, for watching. If you want to find more great health IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com. Thanks, David. Thanks for having me, John.